everyone and welcome back to So What If I Sew or welcome if you're new. I'm Jess and this is my channel all about sewing, dressmaking and all things stitch related. Now I have been taking a little bit of a break, kind of unintentional to be honest, from YouTube because um, my endometriosis awareness campaign is taking up a huge amount of my time. It's wonderful, I'm really enjoying doing it, but along with that and moving house and all sorts of other stuff, um, I haven't, for one thing, actually had the physical space in the house to sew a lot, but also literally every minute of my day is accounted for at the moment. So I suddenly realized when I was thinking, I haven't done my winter makes roundup. Um, so, it's two weeks late, but here we are. Um, today I'm gonna to take you through all of the things I made over winter. Now I can't show you all of them. Uh, I can show you photos, but I can't show you them all in person because some of them were Christmas presents. But I will talk you through, as always, my proudest, my most challenging, my most worn, and hopefully this video is enjoyable for you guys. So let's get going. So my most challenging make of the winter is one that I don't have here and it's my sister's Eden coat. Now firstly you guys have followed me making my first one, there were definitely some irritating bits but you know it went well. Now my sister's one didn't go badly, I'm very very happy with hers but for some reason I had mistakes on that coat that I honestly, I, I never had in the first one, ever. It took me like four goes to get the hood onto the main body of the coat, which was so frustrating. Also, um, because her fabric was so much lighter than mine and her lining was a really lightweight viscose rather than mine was quite a stable cotton poplin, so it moved everywhere. And I really hope she's getting the benefit of that lining because it is obviously easier to take it on and off when the lining is slippery. But oh my God, it was so hard. But yeah, she seemed to love it and I'm really happy with it, but I definitely threw it a couple of times. <laughs> I wasn't super happy while I was making it. It was really frustrating. So my proudest make is actually this. So it's my second VN blouse from Size Me Sewing. Uh, the first one I did as a pattern test for um, Donna from Size Me Sewing. And I made a second one, and this is my favorite because it's semi-sheer, it's my first ever make using chiffon, and it's my first ever make using French seams, and I love them, I love everything about it. And actually, this is my proudest make because this is by far the most professional looking garment I've ever made. There is not a single loose thread on this. I really made sure I did tiny, tiny, neat little hems all the way around. Um, all of the stitching is like the best it's ever been and my French seams are on point. And when I wear it, I actually feel like I've bought something really expensive, so I love the luxury feel. Uh, the chiffon is from Rainbow Fabrics Kilburn, but it is definitely out of stock. That being said, it is a basic polka dot chiffon, so I'm sure if you wanted to recreate this, you could find it pretty much anywhere. Normally, I wear it uh, with a high-waisted pencil skirt or my little cord mini skirt or even jeans, but it's really cold in the house right now, so I've got trackies on. <laughs> but yeah, it works really well with like a high-waisted vibe as well as like over skinny jeans and boots and stuff. So I'm a really big fan. It's a really versatile piece. And yeah, I, I love it and it is, for a first time using chiffon, I'm immensely proud of it, so it definitely goes down. Even though it's like one of my simpler makes, it's the level of finishing detail. I'm so proud of myself. I could not have achieved it six months ago, let alone, you know, like even, even in the autumn, I think I would have struggled. So I'm really, really proud of this garment. most worn garment now these were a toss-up for my most worn or my favorite but actually they had to go into most worn because obviously I've worn them around about weekly since I made them they are of course 
my McCall's M7131 Calotte made from an abstract viscose marica from Rainbow Fabrics Kelvin. I made them for my Christmas Day outfit and I love them and they've gone into my most worn but as I say they could well have been my favourite because they represent such a step outside of my comfort zone and I was so worried that I wouldn't like them, that they wouldn't suit me but I've actually found they made me look tall I love the silhouette, I love how much space there is in the trouser and I love that the pockets are good and are a decent size also, I don't know if you guys can see there's a really nice pleating detail at the front which I find gives me a really nice sort of flat silhouette but it's elasticated at the back so not only are they kind of comfy and look very professional for work they're great on days when like you know I'm a little bit bloated or I've got period pain or anything because they do sit really kind of comfortably without digging in or having any zips or uncomfortable tight fastenings. So my favourite make is the VN coat from Size Me Sewing. I just, I don't know, it's my favourite because it's just really cosy. <laughs> so I will say I need to put a fastening on here to keep it closed on me. Um, and I went a slightly different direction with my collar so I didn't interface my collar. Um, so you know on a lot of other people's the, the collar stands up like this. I mean it can stand up like this and it's very very cosy and uh, if you want to stand up this you need to put a little fastening up here at the top to make it do it. But yeah I'm a big fan like lapel sit open I like the pockets it is fully lined which I'm very proud of um and yeah I'm really happy so it's an acetate lining I'm not sure from where but the wool is from pound fabrics and yeah the pattern is from size me sewing it's really cozy it's very easy it's very accessible to beginners if you want to make yourself a kind of smart looking outdoor coat um you know it's a little bit smarter it is definitely, I'd recommend it as like a beginner friendly pattern. There's a lot of really complex coats out there, but this is not one of them. Now, I will say mine has not got the crispest edge in the world, but that is because, um, if I'm honest, I need to do a little bit of understitching that I now, I didn't realise until I'd pulled it through and everything um, and backed it out, which is annoying. But okay, so I am actually on mine going to run a row of very, very small stitching down the edge just to give it a slightly crisper finish but yeah that's that's on me but no it's, it's my favorite make it's really cozy it's really snug I found when I've gone out in it that like yeah I really don't feel the wind in it and I like the length so if I stand back you see my waist is here and it's like mid thigh on me and I'm quite short so I think it's kind of short coat long jacket vibe and a lot of other people um but yeah it's definitely like it is it is a coat I would say and it's got like a nice it's got a nice back and yeah it's really cozy very simple and I'm, I'm proud of it as well because I sort of just I don't know I just banged a coat together I didn't really think about it obviously I was pattern testing so I was thinking about the wording of the instructions and things like that but I didn't actually have to necessarily think which showed me how far I've come in terms of my sewing in the last year really so yeah I'm, I'm loving this coat and it is definitely my favorite make once I've got a fastener on it then it will be worn a lot more but I still I thought I'd ordered one and I haven't so I'm gonna order something for before we move I think to get this done so on to the top three things I learnt over this winter in terms of my sewing number one is that you shouldn't be scared of techniques just because you've not done them before. So I learnt to do two new things uh, over the winter which have now become staples for me. One of which is shearing and the other was French seams and I've always been terrified of French seams but honestly I love them. I love everything about them and I now do them constantly on like every garment because um, my overlocker is still not here however it's coming next week. I actually have a delivery window now. Um, so 
there's lots of fabrics for me it's quite hard to finish also I've been sewing with quite a lot of very light lightweight chiffons and very lightweight viscoses and it makes such a difference I've found sewing with French seams and they weren't you know you'd concentrate the first time and now they're easy as anything so that's one thing I've learned is not to be scared of new techniques thing two is very practical um don't make all your Christmas presents don't do it uh, unless you're going to start in the summer. Um, I said I was going to make five Christmas presents this year and I managed four and one of them unfortunately I left too late and it was too complex and I messed it up and oh it was awful. Um, it was my dad's, I am going to try and make it for his birthday in April however it may end up being May because we're moving house and I don't really have the literal space in the house right now to do it so it might be a case of having a crack at that once we move but yeah be nice to yourself be kind to yourself and also don't let people bully you into making things for them for christmas like not that my family did in any way but there's definitely a feeling i think sometimes that if you're making something for one person that you know everyone else wants something made for them but you know stand your ground value yourself and your time you don't have to make everything and you know make sure that you are very clear as well with how long things take because I was way too ambitious. Um, and I'm, I'm really chuffed with the four things I did make actually. But yeah, it was definitely quite a stressful time and I didn't get to do any sewing for myself. So yeah, either start much earlier in the year or restrict the number of presents you sew, that would be my advice. So the final thing I learned over the winter, and this is a weirdly simple thing, but it's actually something I'd never considered. So basically, when you are sewing winter projects, in my experience, you need to be more organised because winter fabric takes up so much space compared to like summer viscoses and cottons and things. If you're using like big cosy jerseys or like wool for coats, it takes up so, so much stash space. And it meant that I've actually felt really disorganised over the winter because I just feel like I don't have anywhere to put anything now because I've got too many bulky fabrics in my stash. So what I have learned for me is that I'm going to be a bit better about planning my winter makes and really having a look at what I've got, maybe separating my stash by summer and winter, definitely thinking about it more. Because obviously in the summer sometimes you can just buy a couple of metres of viscose and stick it in your stash and it's fine. But yeah, with the kind of bulkier fabrics, particularly with like coating wool, uh, that takes up so, so much space. So yeah, that's... I'm going to be better about thinking about what fabric I have, what space I have, and what time I have to make it as well. That is a roundup of my winter makes. Um, I really, really enjoyed everything I made over the winter. I didn't make as much as usual because in January and February I had a load of stuff I was going to make with my overlocker, which again, is not here yet. So it's, it is coming next week. And what the thing is, so it's coming between Monday to Thursday next week, and we are moving house the week after. So what I've decided is I'm not going to open it until April. I'm going to leave it boxed up so it's safe, it can be transported easily. I'll box my other machine up at the end of next week so that again, as we pack, everything's just safe. And then once we have moved and I'm, my final uni assignment is in on the 1st of April, well, for this term anyway, um, once that's in and we've moved house and we can take a breath, then I'm going to get to know my overlocker properly and really, really enjoy it. I can't wait. So, you know, that is, I did make less than I would usually. I'm very happy with what I made. I also spent most of the month of January and half of February pattern testing, which slows down the amount of personal sewing you can do. But I'm happy with what I made. My culottes are, honestly, I think I wear them about weekly. I love them. I'm so excited to wear them into the office when I eventually, I'm not that excited to go into the office, but when I do, I'm gonna wear my culottes because they're beautiful. Um, and yeah, I'm really happy with the things I've, like the techniques I've learned and everything. I feel like I've advanced quite a lot as a sewer over the last six months. So if you are interested in any of my winter makes, I have put links to them all below, whether that's blog posts or blogs or vlogs, you can find them, find those makes in. 
and tell me what your favourite of my winter makes was in the comments below. I always like hearing what you guys like versus like what are my favourites and it's, it's really interesting. So let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share and subscribe if you want to hear more from me. Recently I passed 1k subscribers, which was so exciting. So in April will be the second half of my celebratory collaboration with Sewn on the Time. So look out for that reveal video in April for what pattern I actually went with on our same fabric, different pattern challenge. So otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time.